Hi, I am Bogdan, the owner of DNN Sharp. I just got back from Italy, where I've attended uh, the DNN Connect conference, and it's been a great event. And we got uh, excellent feedback from the community uh, regarding uh, our uh, extensions, but also the new project that we're preparing. And here I'm referring to the Skin Engine, and there were a few people that um, were privileged to see this demo um, live. But uh, the quality of um, the projector and the sound in the room, I don't think it was very great. So um, I've decided to make this video, this follow-up video, um, and uh, redo the demo, at least some steps of it. I will not go through all. There were basically two ideas that um, I've tried to point out during my presentation. That is that we need to reposition DNN in a different market. And I was proposing a niche market, the minimum viable product market, because it's very difficult to compete as a CMS, where there are some big names there, making it very difficult for DNN. Uh, this on one hand. And on the other hand, the idea of separating the DNN core from the DNN UI. The idea is to be able to build new administration UI that is sleek and um, it's lighter, therefore creating new user experiences based on the audience. For example, if we sell it as a say, CMS, then maybe the current administration UI works. But if we sell it as a minimum viable product platform, it will not work, it's too many settings and it's too slow. And during my demo today, I will uh, show you our new skinning engine and then set up a few modules inside this engine. And I will jump right into action. I will not go through all the PowerPoint presentation. This video has been recorded. Um, my demonstration at DNN Connect has been recorded and it will be uh, made available if you want to go through the whole thing. I just want to keep this video short and to the point. So uh, I just jump straight into the demo. What I have here is a blank new website. Now, the first thing that I am going to do is I am going to switch to our new um, skinning engine. And to do that, we can either change the skin for the page or we can change it for the whole site. And I will change it for the whole site. <coughs> the skin is called, and our search engine is called Sharp Look. And I will change the edit container as well. Now, the f what you see now is a blank page. It's a simple page. And you know how they say, the simple, the better. But we are going to build on top of this. So um, first thing that you'll notice is that there is no control bar at the top. All the settings are hidden be behind this little button here. And also notice the, mo follow the modes. So we have the view mode that is targeted for the uh, visitors of the website. We have the editor that is for content editor, the layout. This is perhaps for website owners where they can define how content is arranged into the page. And design mode is a new thing that we've added, especially for designers. So we want to bring everybody working together uh, on the website. So far, the workflow has been like the designer would make the design, send it to some guy that would uh, make some DNN skin and then also work on the layout. The client would come and make modification to the layout, ask the skin designer to make modification to the layout. So it was a mess. We want to bring everybody here on the site and you'd never have to do a skin from the code again. But we'll get to that in a moment. Now. The first thing, I can go to the layout mode. In layout mode, I can uh, draw the panes that I want. Uh, all pages start with the content pane, but I can easily add rows, split them into, 
resize them, split them again. So you see, usually you'd have to do this from the ACSX file and that would be very uh, difficult to do for non-technical people. But now it's easy. Let me name these panes. Okay. And maybe I will add more uh, one row to make it the header. I, I will need a header. And then I have the content pane, maybe also split the content pane in uh, left and content right. And let's save. So what I have so far is one row with one pane, one row with two panes, one row with three panes. Now, you may have noticed that um, this is, uh, you see big buttons, and this is because uh, we've made it touch optimized. So if you have a touch screen or an, or an iPad, also you will notice that is everything is responsive. But you can basically do your administration with, uh, with using the touch, using your finger. So now that we have a layout, we can add modules to this. Now, if you were doing it the traditional way, you'd go to edit mode. And then to each pane, you would add a new module. For example, I would add an HTML module here. Again, I'm using touch. And you see it added an HTML module at this page. I could also go into layout mode and add all at once. So I will save a lot of time. For example, let's say that I want to delete this. Again, I will save time. I don't have to, um, to delete one at a time. I can delete all, and when I click save, they get deleted. So it's, it streamlines the process of, of uh, managing the website, creating uh, content, you see? And now I will do the same. I will add an HTML module here. I will add an HTML module here. Or maybe here I will add an uh, action form. I will put a registration form, delete this. Uh, then here maybe I will add another um, HTML module. And then maybe here I will add another, um, I don't know, uh, NavXP module. And here maybe I'll add another HTML module. So you see, it was very fast to create my uh, layout, my page structure. Next thing, I will need to go to the uh, edit mode. And now I have all this um, content here, but I will need to add content to them. And now I do have some content, but I will need to copy. I do have some uh, HTML temp templates that I've exported, but I will need to copy them over. So let's say that I want to import some HTML here. Again, you see large buttons, so again, I can use my um, I can use my finger to import content. And here, of course, I don't have uh, all the templates yet because I just copy them and I will need to synchronize the file manager in DNN. Now, here is where I'm going to go into the actual control panel. So far, you only saw um, some layout mode. But you haven't saw the admin buttons. They are all hidden behind this uh, button here at the top. And here you see that uh, all the administration functions that you know from DNN, the page uh, features, the administration pages, the host pages. Now, you'll also notice this search bar at the top. So what I can do is I can search file management and it will bring me everything that contains these keywords. So it's like you have it in Windows 8. But more than this, let me show you. The whole page is wired to the keyboard. So if you start typing anywhere, so let's say I'm on this page and I start typing file, it goes directly into this mode, searching. So I can hit the arrow down, enter, and I'm already in file manager. Uh, and it was very quick. So let me resync this, go back refresh the page and uh, let's see yes now we have plenty of templates here so let's start maybe with a su success story
Here I can, uh, this is an action form, I can start with a registration form. I will, not got, I will not go into the details of this module in this video. Okay, and here at the bottom, maybe I can uh, also import another form here. Maybe I'll take the profile of the week. And here I have a menu, maybe I will... Um, I don't have any pages yet, that's why I only see a link, maybe I leave it like this. And here I can import some other content, let me see if I have any more content to import. Um, I will import the success story again. So what I have so far, I see I have some big content here, so maybe I should go in layout mode and arrange it a, a little more, give it a mo more space here. Maybe I could delete this uh, center pane, I don't really need it. Delete. Okay. And make this uh, even size. So let's go, now let's go to the view mode and see what the page looks like. So I have some uh, success stories, I have some um, registration form here, and here some more HTML code. Now, of course, this is just the content, but it doesn't look so nice. So the next thing, I'll go into design mode. And here I get to edit each row. So the first row, I will add to have the background. Maybe use this background, and then I will have to add some uh, margin because this is now is quite empty. Okay, let's save, go to the view mode. Let's see what we have so far. Still a bit, a bit too small. Let me put some more space here. Okay, save. Yes. Okay, so now we have this uh, row and we have uh, the profile of the week. Now I would like to add some background on this last row. Maybe a bit lighter. Okay, so you see it's quite fast, quite fast to create content. And uh, also apply basic design. I could also, for example, here I have some black text. I could change the color text to white so I can actually see the text. And I could uh, maybe add some border, border to the bottom. Maybe put a um, wide border, a black one. Okay, so I created a nice border effect here. And then I could also deal with spacing uh, other borders. So you see, it's quite easy to um, create pages. And this, as far as you can see, this has been optimized for long pages and for uh, squeeze pages. So you see, it's very easy to create. But we'll also get into uh, more advanced scenarios as we proceed with development because what I'm showing so far is not uh, yet released, is um, actually a work in progress, is a concept that we're working on. And I think we, we are uh, maybe a few weeks to a few months away from having a first release. So next thing, I will start creating new pages. Again, I can use the keyboard create, create new page, hit enter, and I'm in the create new page form. Maybe let's call this create profile. And again, I can go to the layout mode and add an, HTML, an action form module. Again, you see at the top, it, uh, it made a list so sharp look made a list of the modules that I used uh, recently. So I don't have to scroll again searching for them. I already searched once and most likely I'm going to reuse the same modules over and over again. So what I'm going to add here is an action for module. Uh, 
and I'm going to actually I do have a template here that I'm going to import especially uh, for building profiles let's see create profile form yes so um, action form is quite uh, capable of um, running many actions so you build a form and on a button you can stack actions and i'll show you that in a few again go to manage form this is the form that i have so far so it's a lot of fields of different types check boxes text boxes and here i have some buttons and on, on a button i get to specify a list of action and each action does something for example i have this update user profile action that basically takes all the fields and tries to map them to the profile properties of current user redirect to portal page obviously goes redirects the browser to a page and then if you open this you'll notice dozens of actions from sending sms's from um, creating pages dynamically sending emails uh, displaying some messages uh, uh, making http requests running sql query parsing them with regex making payments integration with salesforce so we have a dozen of action and we have also have this architecture where you can easily implement new actions and uh, just drop them in a config file in action form and they will be picked up so it's, it can be easily extended with new functionality okay so now maybe i will want to add some design to this just go again to the design mode So maybe find a uh, switch to white anyway and but we need to find a design that would uh, be uniform something like that because otherwise uh, if it's many colors i think um, the background will break the form and this one could work although again it's white you see in some places i don't see the i don't actually see the the text from the forms okay uh, uh, now you see this uh, bar at the top gets in the way and that's what this last button is for so i can just click it and it will go on a side in sideways so i can um, i can um, view the whole page without this bar interfering um Next thing that I can do, for example, I can add some space. I can do all sort of these uh, design tricks. For example, add some space, maybe more, not boredom, sorry, sorry. More space at the top and at the bottom. Now, going back to the, what I've told you about uh, actions from action form, I want to quickly go over other of our modules because the fact is that all our modules work together to build applications and that what is uh, our demo was all about using all our stuff to build to easily build applications and um, this is i think it's a perfect fit for building minimum mim minimum viable products for startups so i will quickly go through some of our other modules for example, I'll show you the action grid module. <coughs> this uh, is basically a grid. Again, it's a grid that it's touch optimized, it's responsive, and it's extend and it can be easily extended. The first thing we, we can select a data source and here I could select a uh, action form it, so it connects with action form and integrates edit uh, and delete and edit it integrates everything it also implements a lucene based index for searching and filtering so it's very fast for this it caches data so it makes it very fast but let me show you maybe just connect to a database table and go to the users table and show you how easy it is 
to just for on the core tables to build a management functionality because I don't have action form here with the data to show you that integration. So now I will choose which one is the ID column. I could add a where clause. For example, maybe I want to manage only users from current portal. So I will, I will write here portal ID equals portal ID. But I will not write this because I know the portal ID is not part of the users table. It's a different table. And then I get to specify an add and an edit to URL. Because Action Grid doesn't manage this data directly, I will need to build a form or maybe I could use one of the mm, core modules to redirect to that page. So there will be a button when I click add, I'm taking to a different URL where I can add this user, for example, and same with edit. So update data source. And now below the data source, there are all the fields from the table. What I can do is I can um, disable columns that I'm, that I'm not interested in. Uh, like IP, last modify, so I don't want to display this on the interface. Maybe leave this is super user because I want to show you something. Okay, so I disable a, a bunch of columns. Now, um, <coughs> other thing, I can uh, go into each column, for example, in the um, super user, and I have some option here. I can define which column is sortable, which is filterable and which is searchable. And let me show you how this all work. So I'm saving, I'm going back. And now I already have a grid with all these columns. Now um, notice how I can select and I can select with the finger, it's touch optimized. And then I have this remove button here. I can remove them uh, in a bulk operation. And then um, notice the search, so I can uh, you see, I can search and it's very fast because it uses this uh, Lucene based index, like I told you. And then we have the sorting, which is obvious. And then we have this filtering again, a big button. So it's touch friendly. And the only column that I marked as filterable is the e super user. So I can filter so to see only uh, super user or see only regular users. X to close the filter. This grid, sorry. <coughs> this grid is also responsive. You see? Although at some point there will be too much data for it to be responsive anymore. What we will do in a future release, we will make this uh, some options to choose which columns are visible on which displays. So it's, it's possible that if you're on a mo mobile device, you only, saw maybe, uh, you only show maybe the email field and the user ID and the display name. But if you are on a desktop device, maybe you want to show a bunch whole more. Okay, let me show you some other modules. Again, I will create a new page. Uh, and I will show you next our uh, sharp scheduler module. This um, sharp schedule uses exactly the same concept as action form. Only the data is um, the trigger is not a submit button. The trigger is a, uh, a time trigger or an event trigger. So let me show you, for example, I can create a new job, give it a title, demo job. And then I get to specify some triggers. I could say maybe repeat daily, uh, maybe only Monday and Thursdays, stuff like that. And I can create a complex, complex schedule. So I'm not limited to creating only one trigger. I can create any number of triggers. And when these are triggered and these triggers fire, I get to specify a list of actions that will get to execute. And here you'll see a lot of commonalities with action form. So you can actually maybe run a SQL query, uh, get some data and then do something with that data. For example, uh, um, I can load users, so I can load 10 users. 
with a SQL query and then maybe send them an email to all of them. So I can easily do this with Sharp Scheduler and again this uh, architecture is uh, very configurable so you can implement your own actions drop them in the config folder and sharp scheduler will pick them up and you they will be available at, uh, as actions here so that that is very cool because you don't actually need the source code and you don't need to learn all the source code you only need to implement an interface in your class all the logic will be in your assembly and you only need to implement um, i think two methods and then just drop this uh, DLN in the bin folder, drop a config in sharp scheduler config folder, and that's it. So we are very proud, very, very proud of this architecture. Uh, next thing, I am going to create a uh, new page for the API. We have an API module that unfortunately is not released yet, but we are very close to release it. Let me find it uh, here, the NN API endpoint. So what this does, it lets me create an API, an API me method. Let me accept uh, some method. So for example, I want to, this method will accept po only post or only get. And then I can define a list of data that I require as parameters. They will need to be sent as um, a query string or as a post data. So I can say, um, I don't know, name. And then when this API is fired, I again, I get to specify a list of actions. So you already see, saw this uh, list of action twice. This is the third time is basically the same thing. I can, for example, run a SQL query, extract some data, and then go to response and uh, write a JSON response with that data. So for example, I can, uh, um, let's, let's say I would just reflect back the name field. Uh, let's see, name sent. And here I get to use these tokens. So all the fields in action form and in uh, DNN API and in other modules, all the input fields become tokens like this that I can use inside actions and many other places. Okay, so uh, let me save this and show you real quick what is that. So I have, a, I have a method and I uh, get to test it here. I'm not forced to use it here. I'm not forced to use it with this code. This is just an example so I can get quickly started. So let's say my name is Bogdan. I click the execute button and it fires up, fires back a JSON and name sent and the token was replaced with my input parameter which was Bogdan. I could take this code and use it as it is or I could write this code on the server side and it would be the same thing. I need to make a get uh, request to this URL and pass the name Bogdan in the query string. So this saves a lot whole of time having to write uh, web services because everybody's writing them manually from the code. And now you saw how quickly it is to, um, to work with web services. And for most of, our, most of our modules, you don't need to have any technical uh, strong knowledge, but it helps if you have some SQL knowledge because uh, most of the time, maybe you'll need to run a SQL query, get some data, do something with it. It will also help if you are familiar with web services in case for example, you need to communicate between multiple systems. If you want to parse data, then maybe you need to know some regex and so on. So you, you, as you need to do more advanced stuff, you need to know this technology. But for simple stuff, you really don't need to know anything. It's just uh, this token, this token um, uh, scheme that we are using everywhere in oral modules, make it really easy for non uh, technical people to use our modules. So like I did here, I just put the name token, which will get replaced with the value from the name field. And this is, uh, I, I think, 60% uh, of all the development that uh, all the implementation of our modules is all about.
We have a, a dozen more modules, but I will not go through all of them. I have already uh, spent uh, more time, made this video longer than I uh, plan to. I will just go quickly over all of them so you can uh, make an idea on how to use them. And um, here, action form I've already showed to you. Dynamic rotator is our uh, rotator, but it's more than a rotator, it's actually a um, uh, s uh, s like if you want a scene designer you can put object and give them uh, some um, path to move on stuff like that and then action grid i show it to you easy container is uh, is a very it's a brilliant concept you get this uh, button edit container you open it and you can edit the container directly on the screen you don't have to go to css files and you have uh, color pickers and everything and you can do it directly from your site it will open a pop-up and you will see the changes real time and also with easy container we'll do some big things in the following weeks we'll make it responsive we'll also make it um, so it can be enabled or disabled based on conditions on the server side so you can achieve uh, for example response uh, adaptive design where uh, on mobile devices you only have some um, some modules visible and you disable them from the server side so you save bandwidth it's not responsive where you show them on uh, hide them from from the client side then we have this faq master which is a simple fa faq module we have my tokens which maybe you have already seen during this video this basically uh, um, if you are familiar with dnn tokens this comes with uh, dozens of new tokens but also lets you create your own tokens so you can create your own tokens from a SQL query or from a web service and then use this token in the for example in HTML module or in action form modules or everywhere tokens are supported and then NavXP is an advanced navigation system you get to specify your own um, uh, hierarchy so you're not restricted to using DNN hierarchy so you can drag and drop your own uh, pages the way you want them and then once you have this hierarchy there are also some advanced options if you want to render from the root of the hierarchy or from the current page in the hierarchy so you only render ch child pages and there uh, is also that's one part of navxp the other part is the skinning engine it has an xsl based skinning engine so you can be build any kind of navigation you want you can build breadcrumbs you can build menu you can build mega menus you can build um, footer links so anything re related to navigation you can build on navxp and then redirect toolkit it's a um, very advanced framework for uh, writing redirects and you can redirect based on user information based on role information based on uh, a paste like query string or form data you can uh, redirect based on GeoIP location we integrate with maxmind and geobytes or you can uh, redirect also based on a token and uh, you can redirect based on browser capabilities so you have uh, dozens of redirect types to write to use and also while doing redirects again you get to specify some actions so you can you can say log if in query string there is this parameter redirect to the home page but also log out the user or uh, save something in the session so you can save a variable in the session and then on home page based on that variable do something different so it's very good for building uh, workflows and processes okay then is, uh, we have search boost which is our uh, search engine and it's a uh, very very highly customizable if you haven't used it so far um, I mean you could use uh, the new search engine in DNN Pro but it's nothing like Serbus it, it has maybe 2% of the functionality the search boost comes with Serbus lets you create for example which page you want to index which folders you want to index for each folder you can give a boost so you say this folder is more important or this um, page is more important and this will affect ranking you get to specify categories which will be the facet searches you get uh, to specify custom data so you can build custom filters there's also an um, advanced search integration with action form so you can build a advanced search form with different drop downs and so on and feed that into the search boost and filter based on that and then uh, you get to, to also build custom rules which are basically uh, SQL queries to extract data directly from the database and in index that data 
So you no longer depend on the modules providing a search interface. You can implement your own directly from the database. So you have full control on how content gets indexed. And tons of more options, you should get it and try it. Sharp Scheduler, I already showed to you. Tabs Pro, it's a tabs module. It's very, very good. It has persistence options. And uh, the nice thing about it, that it works with modules on the current page. So you don't have to put your content inside tabs. You put it in usual modules like a action form or a HTML module, and then you include this in tabs. So you can have any kind of module inside tabs. And then URL adapter is our um, CO uh, URL rewriter. It's very, very good. Um, you can also attach any number of URLs to a page, so you're not restricted to one, like uh, in, DNN Pro, in DNN, for example. You can build any number of URLs, define which is the primary, which is disabled, so we'll redirect to the primary, stuff like that. And also you get to specify advanced rules, and we implemented a simplified regex engine, so people don't have to know it's regex, it's just a syntax, and that will match a certain uh, pattern, and then you can uh, use it also in the a target where to redirect to. So we have all this collection of tools and you can see how most of them are targeted for building applications, not website, applications. Because they are focused on um, integrations, they are focused on workflows, they are focused on processes. And um, that's it. I hope that I uh, succeeded in making uh, a job uh, maybe a better job that I made at uh, DNN Connect. Uh, I think in uh, one or two weeks we will uh, also release a preview of the Sharp Look. It will be maybe an alpha, but it, it will be very good to get some early validation. So make sure to subscribe to the Sharp Look mailing list because we'll probably deliver it through that list. Through that list. So that's it. Thanks again for your time and have a great day.